Okay, so we're here with Jake, and he works with Real Mobility. And yeah, hey Jake. So uh, we had a few questions. Um, both Andrew, right there, and myself, David, have a, cute, a few questions to to ask Jake and learn more about Real Mobility and about the Next Generation Firefly that just came out. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. So first off, Jake, like, where are you at? uh currently oh so we're located in downtown san francisco um mm -hmm. if you want to you know give us a visit we're located at 1005 market street suite 202 right on sweet so people can actually show up to like your location and maybe oh yeah i mean just shoot us an email um mm -hmm. and we could schedule an appointment from there nice sweet and andrew where are you at i'm in uh tampa florida in our florida office <laughs> nice sweet and i am in san diego california where it's really hot right now um yeah i'm like sweating i got the fan on me so hopefully you can't see it through the video uh then the next question i wanted to ask too was um i'll start i'll start with myself but uh what was the last tv show that you watched and for me the last uh -huh. one i watched was uh walking dead the most recent yeah. And yeah. So I don't yeah. want I don't want to spoil it for people out there, but dude, the season premiere, I was like, incredible. It, it got it was bad, it was good, but then it was it was changed again. I was like, what the heck? Like I tried to go oh, to really? sleep. Yeah, it I hit you with a cheap shot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like tried to go to sleep, and I kept yeah. seeing that image in my in my head, and I was like, man, that is so messed up. Um, yeah. So yeah. No spoiling it, but yeah, that's what I just watched. So what about you, Andrew? I'll, uh, I'll go next. So Friday Night Lights is uh, the last thing that I watched. <laughs> My wife and I are um, revisiting the whole series. That thing has like six seasons, and the first seasons had like 23 episodes. Oh so talk about binge watching. There's like 70 or 80 episodes of Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Gotta love Coach yeah. Taylor. <laughs> Yeah, what's up with you, Jake? What, what what did you watch last? Same, same. Walking Dead. That premiere was incredible. I mean, that was we were waiting for that one. But uh, I also watched Westworld too. Not too sure if you guys got into that one. No, I I never heard of it. Awesome. Yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I know. I got a lot of digging to do uh, on Netflix and stuff. Okay, so let's get into it. So, um, Jake, first off. Uh, we've seen the progression of the Firefly over the past five years and mm -hmm. seeing the next generation Firefly like spurred us on to actually get a hold of you guys um, and, and kind of learn more about it. Um, yeah. What has been the biggest changes between the two uh, generations? Uh, so the first generation actually had the four point attachment. Um, mm -hmm. And our second generation now has a two point attachment, which would hopefully be more convenient to users. Um, it's also a little bit lighter. And it just looks a lot more sleek compared to our older version. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Andrew was talking about it to me a little earlier, but like the modular setup um, compared to the old one, this one, it's in different parts, right? You got like the body, you could even take off yeah. the battery real easy to make it a little bit lighter to put in the back of your car. You, you can detach the, the little attachment that goes to your, your wheelchair. So it's like way easier to to just load up even the back of like a, a convertible or something you know yeah, yeah i think it's a huge aspect of it because myself being a, a wheelchair user um you know you're not always the most stable person in the world different users have different core capabilities and so if you can break that thing down into being multiple different smaller weight um aspects to it it really makes it easier to be able to manage yourself, which is a really big deal when it comes to mobility products for wheelchair users. Oh yeah, definitely. A lot more portable than an electric scooter. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Or like just a power assist. So mm -hmm. yeah, can definitely. you, Jake, can you give us like a background of real mobility for, for people who are completely new to the wheelchair world, haven't heard of it before? Okay, so, so I mean, Rio Mobility, we, we got the name from, because Rio means river in Spanish. Um, you know, a river provides the communities and is always constantly moving. So just like our Firefly, we want to help people in the wheelchair community. 
uh, providing by providing them with you know more mobility, mm -hmm. freedom, and independence. Where did the concept come from? Was it first like um, just an idea, or did he see it see it before with a different product, and he wanted to make it better? Like, how did it yeah, so about? I spoke to the CEO about this. He actually went to a trade show in Germany, mm -hmm. and that's where he saw a couple of you know similar products, and from there, that's where you know. He came up with, I guess, the Firefly and then also the Pivot and Dragonfly. There are other products. Can you say it again, Jake? What, what are the other products? Uh, so it would be the Pivot, which is a lever propulsion system. Mm -hmm. And also Dragonfly, uh, which is almost like a, I guess you can say a bicycle, but then you're using your, you know, your hands to propel yourself. Mm -hmm. And then also the uh, Power Assist uh, <clears throat> Firefly. I know he really like struck a chord with a lot of people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a great way because a lot of people love the the Firefly. Like uh, we we were at the Abilities Expo last year uh, in LA, and yeah. we came into uh, a restaurant and there was like fireflies all over the place. Like it, it was oh, cool. Really? Oh wow, that's pretty awesome. See, I mean, I see him from time to time. You know, whether it's at the mall or on the streets. Mm hmm. Pretty crazy sight to see. It catches everyone's attention. It's a head turner, that's for sure. Right. My personal experience with with the previous generation Firefly, it it was a little cumbersome trying to get the attachment points to connect, you know, in four places. Because four places. It, it was just it had to take like your full like mental concentration to attach it. And it once it was attached, it was perfect. It was great. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it works well in really like tight corners and stuff. So when you're in grocery stores or whatever, it's easy to get around. Um, but I'm really glad that you guys address that. You know, you, you just like pop in, attach it, clamp it, and then, you know, push it up so that you can keep rolling. Well, yeah, I mean, it goes wherever you want to go. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I think one of the great aspects of the new brackets, too, is that um, with the four points, like David was saying, uh, it really gave it more opportunities to bind up, whereas now with just two, um, click and go. Um, also, the user does not have to reach down as far. And exactly. you know, there's certainly a number of users that either cannot reach down or maybe they're a little bit overweight and um, their stomach is like obstructing them from getting all the way down there. Yeah. Uh, I've got some close friends where uh, it was a little bit difficult on the old model and the new model has totally taken care of that so that they can get to it up high and not have to struggle or in some down. situation they don't want to be in. I was looking at... Uh, again, like focusing on some of the new things that you guys built into this second generation. Um, I was looking at the digital control center, the whole um, handlebars and, and um, acceleration, the deceleration. And you mm -hmm. guys really focused on making it more quadriplegic friendly with, yeah. with the like with the levers. Yeah. yeah. Can you explain mm -hmm. a little bit more how the levers work and how it would benefit someone who's a quadriplegic? Yeah, so instead of the throttle where you would have to twist on the older one, now you just have to push the lever, which is a lot more easier. You know, mm -hmm. to yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's forward and reverse, right? That's forward and reverse as well. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which makes kind of a quicker ability to go in reverse. I remember on the old one and on almost all other models in the world, um, yeah. you know, you have to either, they don't have reverse at all or... Yeah. You know, you have to go in forward and then stop all the way and then switch it reverse, and then switch it, you know, whereas now you've literally got a button on either side for forward and reverse. Love yeah. the design. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely trying to make it as simple as possible you know, and as user friendly as possible as well. Mm hmm. So do you have like an industry that you guys look at for inspiration? Like, oh, um, well. Like a lot of the firefly parts you know a lot of the components are actually bicycle parts so mm -hmm. you know we're always looking at the bicycle industry and also you know the wheelchair industry as well to make sure you know our product is you know is compatible with multiple wheelchairs because there's so many wheelchairs out there right mm -hmm. yeah okay that's a that is a good approach because you know if you're looking at some weird like like um, aerospace in, uh, industry or, or something where parts are hard to come across, it's not practical for people. 
you know, yeah, exactly. so you can pick up a lot of these parts from a bike shop or, or at least order them at a bike shop it makes it so much easier for people just day to day. Yeah. And maintenance. Um, you know, a lot of people, maybe they're not in a situation where they're mechanically inclined or anything, but they can go to any local bike shop and have them work on those new disc brakes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, have them work on replacing any of the components like the hands, hand brakes and everything. So it, I, I like the whole bicycle aspect. It's a smart move to use products that are already in the industry and are tried and true, you know? You know, every, every business has its own different departments, but did you have a hand in any of the prototyping of this next generation or did you, you know, get any feedback from the CEO as he was working on it? Um, so I personally did not do any of the prototyping, um, but we do have a new product coming out called E-Dragonfly. Uh-huh. Should be we should be releasing that sometime next year nice in regards to all the other prototypes i i know he came up with a lot and did a lot of testing but um in regards to details i you know i'm not too sure yeah <laughs> that would be an electric <laughs> hand cycle assist yes exactly exactly very cool your company and real mobility the firefly the dragonfly they've really been some of our top selling products on livingspinal.com and we've appreciated working hand in hand with you guys for years now. And it's been pretty fun to be able to show customers our relationship and the way that we can help out. As a manufacturer, it's really hard for you guys to work with everybody to, you know, get all the answers and situations, um, whether it's maintenance or brand new person that wants to purchase one. And we uh, love to be there for your customers and get them through livingspinal.com and their answers um, out there to them. Yeah, and just to to our own horn, we have a killer product page for uh, the next generation Firefly. Uh, um, so there's a for people listening uh, or watching this video, there's we'll put a link at the bottom of the page. Um, but uh, yeah, videos, installation videos, a breakdown of all the specifications, a bunch of zoomed in pictures and, and so on that you're not going to find on um, really any other websites. Are there any stories that you can tell us about customers who have maybe traveled to a foreign land with a firefly or maybe somebody who struggled to get a firefly at some point and then they found a creative way to purchase one or yeah so since my time here i've actually spoken to a lot of firefly users and i mean they couldn't enjoy it more they always tell me what a huge impact it's had on their life it gave them their independence mm -hmm. um, particularly um yesterday actually a woman stopped by and told her that she was able to take her Firefly to Amsterdam with her nice. on a nine-day trip. Yeah. So, you know, she had a blast with that. She was able to hop into the bike lanes, you know, because the max speed is yeah. uh, miles an hour on, on the Firefly. And she was also to, you know, tackle those cobble roads too as well. Right. So I no personally have it. actually been to Amsterdam on uh, my yeah. Firefly as well. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you know how it is. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the trade show that you were talking about in Germany is yeah. Rehawk Care, and uh, I went to that as well and brought a Firefly with me. You know, there's no better place to be on a bicycle than Amsterdam. There are bikes everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, to be a part of that and do it on a Firefly was a real special thing for me too. We're, we're always looking for the next coolest innovative product and uh, – and obviously we have our staples, again, being one of the fireflies, but I was wondering if there's any products out there that you're excited about, like stuff that works really well with the firefly or the dragonfly. Um, you know, I was actually checking out some videos yesterday. Uh, I was actually looking at some robotic exoskeletons. Yeah. Uh, that's something that's, you know, caught my eye. I, I think in the near future, you know, maybe that'll be the new thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's definitely something that caught our eye. Something that um, we're noticing a trend with some of these electric hand cycles um, is some of the ways to add suspension to your wheelchair. So um, traditionally, you had to buy a frame that was more expensive and had shocks built in, which created the frame to be a little heavier. Um, whereas now we actually have a couple options in the industry, two of which that we sell are um, the soft wheels and the loop wheels. So it's a suspension system built into the wheels for the back of the wheelchair. So, you know, when you're pushing your Firefly to the limit, going off road, doing different things, jumping off curbs, because it's really easy to go down a curb with a Firefly, um, you can add suspension to the back of your chair 
and really okay. create that off-road experience um, without you know injuring your back or helping give yourself a little bit more com comfort. So that's been a real awesome product for us to tie along with um, and I think is a neat thing to associate with Firefly. Oh yeah, that sounds great. I mean, what can be better than, you know, adding to a wheelchair and having a smoother ride along with the Firefly? Right. Yeah. Totally. yeah Cause like a lot of people are limited when they first buy their wheelchair to deciding, should I have, should I pay the extra 1100 bucks or like 3000 bucks for suspension or mm -hmm. should I just get it without suspension and like save the cash? Keep but, it yeah. light. Right. Yeah. yeah. And keep it, keep it light when you want it to be light. Where, yeah, because when you're getting into your car, the heaviest aspect of your wheelchair is your frame. So to add the suspension onto the frame, which is already, you know, the toughest thing to bring into the car with you, whereas the wheels are easy. So add a pound onto the wheels, no big deal. Yeah, yeah, totally. Right, and that goes right back to the core of what's new about the the next generation Firefly. Modular, right? You, you're only yeah. lifting like, a small amount of weight at a time. Um, yeah. So I was gonna wrap this up with asking you what you thought the wheelchair mobility, or what the future of wheelchair mobility is gonna be and talking about that exoskeleton, I kinda think you uh, already explained it, but do you know, yeah. do you know <laughs> like what the future of like real mobility is, what you guys are trying to achieve next or oh, yeah definitely i mean we would love to expand you know within i guess the domestic market as well and also the international market you know i think there's so much more room to grow and i, I just don't think we have a you know complete hold of that yet mm -hmm. awesome have you guys looked at making any models with uh, a larger front wheel i know you guys have actually downsized a little bit in the front wheel size mm -hmm. which you know changes your off-road capabilities a bit but definitely makes it easier to handle and lighter yeah. weight. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so we actually transitioned to the 12 inch wheel from the 16 inch because, you know, we did a lot of testing. I spoke to the engineers and they said it's really not that big of a difference compared, you know, performance yeah. wise if you compare the 12 inch to the 16 inch. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Some people have in mind that, you know, maybe a 16 inch, you're, you're going to go faster, you know, than having right. a 12 inch wheel, but I mean, it's the same speed. Yeah. Right. Another feature that I really love um, is in past models, like in the first generation, the headlight was out and exposed. And, you know, when you're hauling that thing and throwing it in and right. out of your trunk and stuff, it was pretty easy to damage it. Um, whereas in the next generation, now you guys have really done a nice job hiding that headlight and putting it in a protected space so that um, there's no damage there. So great design aspect improvement there. Yeah, I think overall it looks like sleeker and <laughs> cooler than, yeah, yeah, than yeah. the last generation. Um, as far as range, what are you guys saying? Um, uh, and uh, obviously you can get variables of uh, if you're a big guy like me or um, some petite little lady weighing 100 pounds. Um, but what kind of distance are you seeing out of most users? Oh, yeah. You, with the Firefly, you could easily push 50 miles or so. Wow. Yeah, that's a long ways. Yeah, you can go quite a way. That's a that's a half marathon right there. Yeah, and it doesn't last you all day, that's for sure. Yeah. If you have any aspects about the battery and the changes that you've maybe made, um, I believe the new battery is a 36 volt system. And then, um, you know, a big thing that I would love to touch on is your recommendations for how to charge it because that's a huge issue and that's something that is important to get out to the users and to the potential future users um, because it's an expensive part of the unit and yeah. we all know if you don't take care of your batteries, um, it'll just go you know, down the drain. So exactly. what can you tell us about your recommendations and what you tell customers for how to charge and the best way to get the longest life out of your battery? So definitely keep it at room temperature. Don't want to keep it in any freezing temperatures or in the garage like or anything like that. Um, oh, you know, I've been putting mine in the freezer every night. <laughs> I'm going to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, like, if you leave it in your car, like, the battery in, in your car, your car could get up to 120 degrees or something like that. Yeah, exactly. It's like a dog. Yeah. Can't leave it in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could just take the battery out if, you know, you want to keep your Firefly and bring the battery in, in your house and charge it. Yeah. Yeah. 
but, but yeah, point. we usually recommend to charge it overnight. Um, it only takes four hours to charge. So not too long. Uh, you know, if you're gone for like a certain period of time, like on vacation, we don't recommend just leaving it plugged in. That, that's not good for the battery. Yeah. Okay. So basically charge it for four hours. And then um, some batteries, their life cycle, you don't want to let that thing just drain and then get down to nothing. Exactly. Um, is, that the, is that the way that this one is? Or do you want to kill the whole battery and then charge it up? Kill the whole battery and charge it up. Um, in the beginning, that's what you want to do. Um, as you, you know, using it a little bit more, um, you don't really have to do that, but, uh, we haven't had any problems with the recent batteries or the new batteries that we have. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I guess my last question would be sometimes a user will get, you know, in a funk where maybe they haven't used it in a while. What would be the longest time that you would recommend to leave a battery before charging it? So, you know, like, hey, at least once a month, get a charge on your battery. Or oh, yeah. I would even say, you know, two weeks just to play it safe. You know, these, yeah. these batteries okay. are quite expensive to replace. Uh, so I would recommend, you know, every two weeks or at least a month. That's great advice. Thank yeah. you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, Jake. Well, thank you. We really do appreciate your time and what you guys are doing for the paralysis community, wheelchair community. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, we're we're really glad to to talk to you. So hopefully this will help a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, man. Well, we'll talk to you later. All right, sounds good. Okay, perfect. Bye, Thanks, guys.